As humans, we have been able to do some incredible things, built towers thousands of feet tall, sent a dozen of our kind to walk on the moon, and even created the invisible network of computer devices you are watching this on right now, the internet. So, with the treacherous depths comes its own slew of challenges. Scientists struggle to explore more than a mere area of the world's oceans at any one time. As a result, we may never see the strangest things on our planet, not for lack of trying. There is just too much that lurks below the frigid depths to possibly see it all. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three ocean discoveries. Scientists discover Lost City deep in the ocean. In the past, you have probably heard of the lost city of Atlantis. Well, what if I told you that we have actually discovered it? Maybe it's not really the lost city of Atlantis, but it is just as intriguing. Deep in the Atlantic Ocean, on a seafloor mountain called Atlantis Massive, researchers discovered in the year 2000 a massive and highly active group of hydrothermal vents. The area is filled with white spires jutting into the dark waters above and hosts some of the most interesting activities on the planet. The vents at Lost City produce methane and hydrogen abiotically. Usually, these simple molecules are produced by living creatures, but due to the presence of a chemical called olivine, the Lost City is able to create them by itself. When coming in contact with water, olivine sets off a chemical reaction, serpentinization, which allows the area to produce hydrogen and methane without the help of any living organisms. The presence of olivine in the area is thought to be because it is at the intersection of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and the Atlantic Transform Fault, making the Earth's olivine-rich mantle much closer to the surface of the seafloor than usual. Unlike other hydrothermal vents, the Lost City hydrothermal field produces very alkaline white smoke from its chimneys. This starkly contrasts black smoke events, which produce acidic black smoke. Because the Lost City is not fueled by the heat of volcanic activity, the serpentinization reaction, however, is exothermic, which means it releases heat, making the surrounding water heat up to between 90 and 140 degrees Celsius. Much cooler than that of black smokers, but still warm compared to the rest of the ocean. Since it is not reliant on the whims of fickle tectonic activity, Lost City is a very old group of hydrothermal vents dating back about 120,000 years. Scientists believe that since hydrothermal vents like Lost City produce hydrogen and simple hydrocarbons like methane, it may actually be key to the origins of life. All living things known to man subsist off of hydrocarbons and other organic molecules, so it makes sense that the earliest life forms on Earth would need an abiotic source of these chemicals. Lost City is teeming with microbial life that feeds on these molecules, showing us what it may have been like those hundreds of millions or billions of years ago when life began on our wonderful planet. Mike Degree discovers an underwater lake. An American documentary filmmaker, Mike Degree, grew up along the Gulf of Mexico, but little did he know he would make one of the most exciting discoveries of his life in that very gulf. When filming Blue Planet beneath the Gulf of Mexico, he found an underwater lake. In his own words, wait a minute, I'm already underwater. How can there be a lake? But it was. A pool of thick, ultra-salty brine had accumulated in one area, giving the appearance of a lake beneath the waters. This dense lake is so salty, in fact five times more so than the surrounding area, that only microscopic life is capable of living within. The shore of this underwater lake is lined with mollusks and crustaceans. On the other side of the mussels, Degree explains, nothing, mud, it's fantastic. Perhaps the most interesting quality of the undersea brine lake is that submarines practically bounce off it instead of moving through it due to how dense it is. Degree explained that he and his crew tried to descend into the lake, but upon making contact, reported that the liquid was so incredibly dense that the submersible bounced off the surface. He was intrigued by this discovery and wanted to explore further, 
revealing that a whole new world could be beneath this dense lake. Degree is quoted as saying the following, Without a doubt, one of the most amazing things I've ever seen at the bottom of the ocean was while I was filming for Blue Planet. It was in the Gulf of Mexico. I noticed something out in the distance, but couldn't tell what it was. It looked like a dark band. As we approached the dark band, it became a donut. I saw this donut, and it was black in the center. As we got closer and closer to it, I noticed that the black band had what looked like steam over it. But there was water flapping against the shore. This band was a ring of mussels. Inside the ring of mussels was a lake. We went over the water and tried to descend it and bounced off it. The submarine couldn't go inside. We literally bounced off it. I have never seen anything like it. NASA Apollo engines recovered from the bottom of the sea. Decades ago, during the tension between America and the Soviet Union, now known as Russia, was high. This led to a 20th century competition to determine which country had the best science, technology and economic system. During this time, the United States Space Association ran the Apollo space program. During one of these missions, Apollo 11 in 1969, the first humans stepped foot on the lunar surface. For years, it was thought that the engines dropped from the Apollo spacecraft in the 1960s were long gone, deep beneath the oceans, never to be found again, let alone retrieved. However, in 2012, Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon, announced the discovery of what he believed to be the engines from Apollo 11. His team also announced plans to recover two of these powerful Saturn V engines from the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. While it was unclear what shape they would be in, Bezos was hopeful. He knew that while they had been fully submerged in salty water for over 40 years, they were built to last. During the mission, Bezos said that the remotely operated vehicles used to retrieve the parts gave the team poetic echoes of the lunar missions. The abstract, dark blue surroundings gave them the illusion that the engines were being pulled through space by another spacecraft. The recovered parts were enough to rebuild and display two Saturn V F-1 engines. They are currently on display at the Museum of Flight in Tequila, Washington in the United States. But what do you make of these mind-boggling undersea discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.